we don't judge God. God judges us. So we don't judge God's actions based upon our own concepts of righteousness. God is the standard of righteousness. Welcome back to the Straight Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Philpott, and we're glad you've joined us today. As always, I'm joined by Richard Caldwell, the pastor of Founders Baptist Church. And our special guest today is Dr. Nicholas Ellen, a senior professor at the College of Biblical Studies and also pastor at Community of Faith Bible Church. As always, please leave a comment for us in the comment section and do us a favor and please go to the iTunes podcast section and leave us a review. Well, anyone watching this podcast or listening to it uh, is probably aware that at least in our context or our day and age, 2016 through 2018, there's been something like a genocide going on in the country of Syria with President Assad over there where he seems to be on a murderous rampage of his own people. And we hear about this from time to time, uh, even in our own news cycle. Hmm. It makes Christians uneasy in some cases because they read in the Old Testament that God commands entire, the destruction of entire Old Testament cities. You don't really see that too much in the New Testament, but, but you do see it often, maybe in the book of Joshua mm-hmm. in the Old Testament. Uh, Pastor, does, does God command genocide in the Old Testament? No, um, but let me explain why I say no. First of all, I wanna acknowledge, I think we should acknowledge, there are some things that God chooses to do that we don't fully understand. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the first things I want to say in answering this question is we don't judge God. God judges us. So we don't judge God's actions based upon our own concepts of righteousness. God is the standard of righteousness. Uh, the Bible declares that God is good. He is good. And he is the only one who is good in the, in the fullest sense of that term. Only God is good originally. Only God is good infinitely. Only God is good perfectly. Only God is good immutably. So God is not only good, he's always good. He's only good. So the standard of what's right and wrong is not my concept of what's right and wrong. It's whatever God says is right and wrong, whatever God chooses to do. So that's number one. I've got to get out of my mind that somehow I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit in judgment mm-hmm. of what God commands. Second thing I would say is God not only has the right to command the destruction of an entire city, God has the right to command the destruction of the entire world. And in fact, did that on one occasion. Uh, only Noah and his family were spared mm-hmm. and God destroyed the entire world with a flood. So he has the right to command the destruction of sinful human beings if he chooses to do so. And that, that, that is part of our problem. I think we sometimes approach these questions as if we're innocent. Mm-hmm. And the fact is the Bible describes humanity as standing guilty before God, deserving of his wrath. Um, it's interesting to me that in Luke 13, they approach Jesus with a couple of questions that sort of would be comparable to our 9-11 experience. Mm-hmm. So Pilate had mingled the blood of some with their sacrifices. There had been a destruction of some people there. A tower in Siloam had fell on some people and they died. It's interesting how Jesus handled that question. He he didn't handle it as if, why do do bad things happen to good people? Mm -hmm. He he made this point. He said, um, were they worse sinners than all the rest? Mm -hmm. Truly, I say to you that unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. You're, You're all on the road to destruction and unless you repent and turn to God with a penitent faith for salvation, you're gonna perish. So the whole world is headed for destruction. So uh, we don't judge God and he has the right to command the destruction of cities if he chooses to do so. Now, with respect to the question of genocide, um, here's how Merriam Webster defines genocide. The deliberate killing of people who belong to a particular racial, political, or cultural group. So it's destroying entire groups of people based upon their ethnicity, based upon their politics, Mm. uh, based upon their culture. That is not what you see happening 
when the people of God entered into the land of Canaan. Uh, the Canaanites were not to be destroyed because of their ethnicity or their politics or their culture. The Bible makes clear that the destruction was an act of war. Israel is a theocracy. They're taking a land that was given to them by God. And the displacement of the Canaanites and the destruction of the Canaanites is tied in Scripture to their sin, mm -hmm. right? Not their ethnicity, their sin. Genesis 15, 13, Then the Lord said to Abram, Know for certain that your offspring will be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and will be servants there, talking about their captivity in Egypt. He says, But I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve, and afterward they shall come out with great possessions. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age, and they shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. Amorites, a Canaanite tribe, the, the sin that they're going to commit is not yet fulfilled. It's not, it's not full. In Leviticus 18.24, it says, Do not make yourselves unclean by any of these things, for by all these the nations I'm driving out before you have become unclean, and the land became unclean, so that I punished its iniquity, and the land vomited out its inhabitants. So this is judgment from God being executed by the Israelites upon the Canaanites, and the judgment is associated with their sin. So this isn't, this isn't genocide. This isn't wiping out a people because uh, of their ethnicity or their politics or their culture. It was a judgment executed by God through the Israelites, and it had to do with sin. And God has a right uh, to do that. In addition, we see evidence in the book of Joshua that, they're, that they're, uh, they were not all destroyed, and God had pity and mercy upon people based upon repentance. Rahab was not. Um, she, she was a Canaanite, and she was delivered along with her family. Uh, in Joshua 9, the Gibeonites were spared. They entered into a covenant with Joshua. Uh, Joshua eleven nineteen 19 says, There was not a city that made peace with the people of Israel except the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, they took them all in battle. So that indicates that others could have made peace with Israel. They didn't, and they were wiped out. Mm -hmm. uh, but even then, the Israelites didn't complete the job. And you see the results of that later on when idolatry influenced them as a result of them not obeying the Lord fully mm -hmm. in terms of what He commanded them to do. Dr. Allen, how, how do you communicate or maybe preach from the book of Joshua in a way that's sensitive to the full uh, arc, the storyline of Scripture, the contextual things that Pastor Caldwell has just brought up, but is also, I guess, sensitive to uh, God's plan for all the world. Part of what I would like to present with that is the idea that one, God does operate in justice and mercy. Mm. And that there are times and we can't understand when and why God will bring about justice and there are times when God will bring about mercy. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they were a theocracy and now we're in a part of church and state of being separated and we're not a theocracy. Uh, things are handled a little differently. And so the real question is, if God is such a good God, why would he allow evil to exist in this manner? Why would he take out nations? And I would say to people again, you're going back to the mind of God with when he chooses to glorify himself through justice and mercy. And so I would talk about that from the book of Joshua mm -hmm. saying in the context here, uh, there's an agenda going on to where God is, again, using Israel to represent his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And as a result, being under theocracy, uh, there's time for war. And again, not because of their ethnicity, as Richard put, but because of their sin, uh, they're being judged, which again shows how God operates and that in accomplishing his agenda, he still will exercise justice mm -hmm. while even showing mercy mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because not all were wiped out, and as Richard presented before, uh, some, because of repentance, uh, mm -hmm. were restored. So I think we have to understand it from that standpoint okay. in dealing with it. Yeah. That's yeah. excellent, Nick. Yeah, in, in the case of Syria, there's no command of God to do what's being done. Right. In, the, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the case of the Promised Land, there was, and there was mercy demonstrated. And because it's a theocracy, so you have God's kingdom, right? This actually becomes an object lesson for what's going to happen at the end of the age. Absolutely. Because when Jesus returns to this earth from heaven, there's going to be a separation of the sheep and the goats. And those who, who are not reconciled to God through his son Jesus are going to all be taken away into destruction. That's exactly what Jesus does in Luke 13. He takes those two tragedies as a, as a, as a warning 
to the entire world for the, the need to turn to God with a penitent faith. Mm-hmm. And so these stories in Joshua also remind us that God is a God of righteousness and justice and mercy. Mm-hmm. And so how um, urgent it is that we would turn from our sins while there's still opportunity and look to God for mercy. Amen. For He is a God full of mercy, ready to be merciful. Amen. But we have to look to Him for that mercy. Well, thanks again for joining us for the Straight Truth Podcast. And you can find more details about this podcast by going to our website, straighttruth.net. And there you can subscribe to any of our social media channels. But also be sure to go to iTunes and please subscribe to our podcast feed and be sure to leave us a review. Now, Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries. And you can find more details by going to walkingingrace.org. Thanks again.